we've looked at now what a balanced chemical equation is, we've looked at how to balance chemical equations, and we've also looked at some common mistakes that are made predominantly with changing subscript numbers instead of changing large numbers in front of the molecules. What we're going to look at now is something a little bit different, and it's something that is often confusing when you're balancing an equation, and that is when you have brackets in a chemical equation. And to do this, we're going to go through an example, and I'm going to explain as we go through it. So here is a reaction. It's a reaction between something called aluminium sulfate and calcium hydroxide. Okay? We have aluminium sulfate. The formula for that actually looks like this. calcium hydroxide, and these react, I might need to zoom out a little bit here, these react to produce calcium sulfate and aluminium hydroxide, which is So that is the equation that we're looking at. And what I want to draw your attention to, which can often confuse people, are the parts of the chemical formula that have brackets in them. So this and this and this, because it can be a bit counterintuitive or you might not realize what the brackets mean. So what it means, we're going to use calcium hydroxide as an example. We have CaOH and a 2. So what this means is for the molecule, this is how we write the formula for the molecule ra rather than say CaO2H2 because again like I was talking about in the last video doing that again changes what the molecule is what the brackets mean is we have one calcium and that calcium has two hydroxides next to it Another way of looking at it though, especially when it comes to balancing an equation, is that everything within the brackets, we have as many of those as we have the little number next to the brackets, okay? So rather than it just being one calcium, rather than we've got one calcium, when you're counting the oxygen, you don't just have one oxygen, we have two. And the same goes for the hydrogen. And that's in each molecule. So we will look at this for the other reactant, aluminium sulfate. This is actually SO3. We had SO2 before, that was a mistake. So Al2, SO4. SO4, and we have three of those. And what that means is for each one of these compounds, or each one of these molecules, we have two aluminiums, and we have three lots of everything in the brackets, so we have three lots of SO4. So everything, so we have three sulfur and three times four, 12 oxygen in one molecule. So now that we've understood this, we can have a look at balancing the reaction. 
Al2, SO4, plus CaOH2. And this reacts to produce Al OH3 plus CaSO4. And as always, we're looking at counting up how much of everything we have as a starting point. How much aluminium do we have? We have Al2 here. So that is two aluminium here. And on this side, we have one aluminium. And you may have noticed we have a SO4 group here, and on the other side, we have an SO4 group here. So rather than counting up oxygens and sulfurs individually, we can group this as one as a sulfate group, because that doesn't change on the end of the reaction. So we have three sulfate groups, but if you really wanted to keep track of everything, you could also say we have three sulfur and 12 oxygen. That's up to you. For calcium, we have one calcium. And just like with a sulfate group, we have a hydroxide group here. And we also have a hydroxide here, as in the hydroxides aren't being pulled apart and rearranged throughout the reaction. So again, I'm going to count them together. So we have two hydroxide groups and we have three hydroxide groups because of the little three there. So again, if you wanted to just be extra thorough, you could say we have two oxygen, two hydrogen, three oxygen, three hydrogen here and we have one calcium, and that's one sulfate group. So we've got that out of the way, we've counted up how much of everything we have, and we're going to start off, we have to look at what do we have too much of? What do we have too much of on one side of the equation? The most obvious one would be we have too many sulfate groups. Yeah, we have three sulfate groups on the left-hand side and only one on the right-hand side. So, how do we go about fixing that? Well, we can put a three. We can try putting a three in front of one of the products and then recount everything that we've just changed. Let me just get the right color here, actually recount everything. So we have three calciums and we have three sulfate groups. So the sulfate groups are now balanced out and calcium now needs balancing. We've changed how much calcium we have so we should balance this. So we have one on this side. Let's put a three in front and recount everything. So we've gone from one to three. So we have one, two, three lots of calcium. And we have one, two, three times two, six OH groups. And now it's coming together. You might be able to see where this is going. We have two aluminium on this side we have one aluminium on this side. We have six hydroxide groups on this side. We have three on this side. So everything here is exactly half of what we have for that compound on the left-hand side. So what we can do then, we put a two in front here, and then we count up again. We have two aluminium, and we have two times three, six hydroxyl groups, or hydroxide groups, rather. So is that balanced out? 
Let's see. Aluminium, one, two. Aluminium, one, two. Sulfate groups, three of those. Sulfate groups, three of those. Calcium, three of those. Calcium, three of those. OH, six of those, six of those. So this is now balanced. And this is the way it would go about doing it. If instead you'd looked at this, let me just rewrite this really quick. If you decided, oh, well, it looks like we have, you could say, oh, look, we've got three OH here and only two here. So why not just uh, change this number to this? And then you've got already balanced how many uh, hydroxides we have on both sides. But again, this is like what I talked about in the previous video, where when you're changing a subscript number, even though this is involving parentheses or brackets instead of just a subscript number on its own, again, going from changing that to this, what you're doing is saying you're changing something that's like that into something that's like that. And that is, again, not what you want to be doing because balancing, balancing an equation is not meant to be changing what chemistry is happening. It's meant to be changing how many lots of every molecule we have until we have the right amount and that therefore the reaction makes sense. So just a quick note on what we've learned about today is in substances with parentheses and those are brackets and substances with parentheses everything inside of the parentheses is affected by the subscript number. And again, that's that might be um, overly verbose. What that means again is if you've got SO4, 3, that means everything inside of these brackets, the 3 applies to all of it. Okay? So that should be another thing that can come up in a chemical equation that you need to bear in mind. Practice makes perfect, so in future we are going to be looking at previous exam questions that asked you to balance equations, and we're going to work through how you could have answered those just to drive this home. Alright, thank you. Behave.